Hello and welcome to Moving Pictures Kenya. You are right in time for this week's edition of Eyeing the Dream. It has been snowing here in Pennsylvania and I have a snowman here. I'm told somebody creative enough came and created a snowman out of snow. This reminds me of one of the most prolific songwriters in Kenya today. He is a musician, an entertainer, and a lecturer at the university. During my recent visit to Kenya, I had a sit-down with him, and today I bring you the story of Ben Abantu Mukabwa. <laughs> His songs are full of drama and very informative. The story of his music journey is truly inspiring. I started this long time ago. I may not remember the particular year, but it's a long time ago when I was a young child and uh, my parents would support me. Like uh, I remember actually my father bought me a guitar when I was in class three. So I've been touching this thing for all that while. Uh, then I discovered that I could make sense with it, especially when I would try and my peers at that time would say, wow, Ben, you're trying, you're making sense, you're making sense. Uh, that sort of motivated me and I insisted on it. That's why I've been pushing this thing all this while up to today. Mm, okay, you know, yeah. it's very interesting compared to other parents. Yeah. It was uh, actually so fun for a child to be in music at the same time in school. And uh, here it is the, that your father took it positive. Yeah, yeah. What about other people who are closer to you, other parents, uh, other people maybe whom you went to school with? Or are they taking it positive or how uh, was it? Uh, uh, in that time, it was difficult for any parent to take music serious because there were no examples to copy from. Many times you'll find if a child is trying to play music, that child would be learning it from an adult and the lifestyle of most adults who were doing music that time were not models. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want your child to associate with them because music by that time would go with the other issues, you know, like uh, generally what we used to call bad manners, you know, bad manners, you know, promiscuity, adultery, um, you know, those things. Then, then, then again, they, you were used to hard drugs. That time, uh, you know, this was very common. Like, we call them vapeni. Vapeni, you know, people who played music, huh? mm. were used to intoxicating themselves with something before they tried this. Mm. So, you see, you can't allow your child to go with such people. Mm. So, I can understand that the parents of that time would resist their children from trying anything artistic like music. I, 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 in the same breath, I would say, I don't know what became of my parents because they were tolerant enough to accept that I try this thing even though the experience and the records were negative. His music, which delves into topics like love and social issues affecting the society, has captivated audiences across Kenya and beyond. During my visit, I found Ben practicing the song Luwaya, in which he beautifully narrates how he inherited the guitar from his grandfather. Mm -hmm. 
He affectionately recalls his father Mze Clement Mukabwa buying him a guitar in class 3, a pivotal moment that set him on his musical path. I think I may have been born with a natural ability to, to do these things. Uh. Oh. So, and I think my parents saw that in me. They were patient enough to observe me and see uh, that maybe there was this thing in me. And uh, they were patient enough, and in that I appreciate them, to allow me to do it and support me do it even while I was pursuing education. Because I did, it, I did the two things together. By the way, you may not know, I did music, I did fine art, Actually, my main study has been in fine art, you know, visual arts, you know, music is we call performing arts. So they were pushing me in art as well as pushing me in academics, as well as pushing me in music. They supported me. I appreciate them. My late dad, Mze Clement Mukabwa, and my mom who just passed on, we are burying her next week. Uh, actually, she's the foundation of my music. Those two, that team, really put me where I am today. I owe, I owe them so much. Yeah, Ben, if I may come in briefly. Yes, sure. You've talked about, uh, you know, uh, mixing music and education to succeed. Mm. I know there are people now, especially the young generations who don't want to study, mm. they believe that uh, they can be able to earn from their talents or to earn their, from their music. Mm. What would be your piece of advice to them? Yeah, 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 the young men who like to try music without any education, Knowledge is power. When you are educated, you are empowered. You can borrow from a wide scope, even when you're creating your music. You can interact with the whole world intellectually when you're creating your music. It can give you a, a, jump, a, a head start when you want to uh, create music that is universal, that reaches everybody. Education is very important. First of all, when you have some education that can support you in other things, even as you create music, you don't become, you don't become um, desperate. Yeah, it can guide you even as you, you need food as you compose your music, you know. Mm. So you, if you compose from, if you, you, you practice your art from totally nothing, you can become desperate. Usually what that, what that does is, you start playing music that uh, people want and not music that you also want. You know, it's important that you create music that entertains people, but... Uh, you, it has also given you a chance to be patient enough to create what you want. You know, what I'm saying is this. You can end up creating only commercial music because people want. Until you forget the creative part of music and the cultural part of music that should be in your music as you create your music because music is a culture. Despite the challenges faced by musicians in previous generations, Ben's natural talent for music shone through. It's not easy to attach a ear. All I can say is... Uh, that uh, in the years, in the 90s, I started making more sense. In the 80s, when I was in, uh, in school, uh, my, my friends who will watch this thing, will watch this, will attest that indeed they saw something in me. There's particularly a friend of mine who was my classmate in primary school called Ibrahim Matsiri. Ibrahim Matsiri will attest that uh, I even used to tie a string on the desk to create resonance, one desk, then I play a song that makes sense, they can tell which song that was, as early as class three. His deep connection to music was nurtured by his mother, serving as the foundation for his musical endeavors. Ben granted me an interview, despite the fact that his mother had just passed on. Now let's talk about composition. Because sometimes there are guys who sing like traditional music, you know, like community songs. Yeah. And then they say that is my composition. Yeah. So for you, mm. how do you compose your songs? Mm. How does composition come about? Oh, oh, first of all, <clears throat> if, for example, you know, I played for that song. That is. You see? That's a song that has been there. Many people have sung this song. But now, 
first of all it would be wrong to claim it's your composition composition now where i now say ben's composition is when i bring my own arrangement on that song that existed that's one two sing it in my style that is not that original then you would say now this is the part of me that is in this song that was there because you can say You see, now that's the part of me that is in this song. I can easily claim now that's Ben's composition. Yeah. Ah, you're asking, were you asking like, how do I create my music? How do I compose my music? Usually, I am inspired by society. Then society has a way of bringing out the key topics. Like, it's easy for me to sing a song for my mom. She has just passed on. May she rest in peace. It's easy for me to sing a song for my mom because it's a topic that is lingering in my mind. So what I simply do is to look for chords on an instrument, like if it's this, this guitar, that is singing a, a, a tone that is mourning. A tone that is mourning, it can, it can mourn. I can give you an example. Because the guitar has chords that are celebration, others are love, others are mourning. Boni boni boni, salam bakamo na zolela pora maranga ye ye ye. Mama Lucia inasi uchende kala, uchi kumbera na sayumi kulo nende banga mukabwa. You know, you see. So uh, I'm inspired by many things. The theme is there, then. By my knowledge of guitar, I can look for a, uh, chords that can push that theme. Because you cannot bring celebratory chord on a song that is funerary. Yep. Okay. Yes. Now, so singing of your mother and saying that she's going to sing in heaven. Yes. I know you are really, from the way you are interacting, you are really talented. Okay. Is there somebody in the family whom you can say, I took over this guy who was my My mother. Um, guys, and I want to tell you very openly, um, my mother is the foundation of all my creativity. If she, in her environment, her youthful environment, would have an environment like I have today, she would be a star somewhere. She would be known all over the world because that woman had a great voice, she had a great sense of art, a great sense of composition, and this kind of instant thinking. This kind of musician who just start the song, then she starts singing on the themes that are available. The foundation of my music and my art is my mother. Mama Lucia Indasi. Nenda Salama Vinguni Mam. So there was that song, Lucia, Mama Wanti. Indasi. That was your mother? Yeah, that's my mother. Indasi. Indasi. Indasi, Mama Wanti. The, the 
they always say that uh, when people die, their spirit hangs just right here. <laughs> I'm sure wherever she is, she must be very happy. Amen, amen. Mom, listen to this. Listen to this guy. It's a young His first serious stint in music was when he teamed up with his friends while at Kenyatta University to form the Grand Salvo Band. I sang this song uh, when I was still at university with my friends Ida Sanga. I sang with Arthur Musambai Janana, Ata. Then uh, Peter Munyao. We did this song. It was my first song when I was at university. Our first band was called Grand Salvo. Grand Salvo. So this was like the first official song I did, and the reception was really massive. Actually, this is what inspired me to continue doing music even after university. Ben's dedication to his craft led to the formation of Jamnazi Africa, one of the most successful bands in Kenya today. Jamnazi Africa was basically me, Newton Ongoro, Peter Daliti and Mike Awilo. It was the four of us who started Jamnazi in, in Eldoridge at a place called Shekhas. Ben specializes in playing the rhythm guitar but is slowly diversifying into playing other African musical instruments. Today, I have really diversified because the music has developed to other uh, um, uh, um, dynamics. Huh? Yes. Today, I can play many, many string, almost all African string instruments. We call them lyres. I can play kora. I can play a deu deu, I can play ritungu, I can play a dungo, you know, all, all those. Then I can play percussions, almost all African percussions. I can do djembes and uh, uh, congas, bongos, and so on. And then uh, I do all guitars. His versatility in singing across different languages such as Luhia, Swahili, Lingala, English, and French highlights the cultural richness in his music. When I play like... You see, this is just guitar. Yes. Language can be any language. So when you play chords like that, you can sing anything. La vie, la vie n'a pas de la you know, you, you can go anywhere so long as you can sing this in any language. So language is not language is not the genre of music. Language is just a means of communication. I can do sing this and sing in Lingala, French, or whatever. I also happen to. Yeah. So from the song you just sang, yeah, it sounds French. It sounds Lingala. Yes. It sounds Rumba. Yes. So which languages do you speak in? What do you uh, sing in? French, Kiluya, of course, naturally. Kiswahili, Lingala is is like uh, I, I grew composing music in Lingala. And if you listen clearly, my brother, if you listen clearly to my music, you you feel that even my Kiluya has an inclination to another conventional language, because uh, being a child of Rumba. I think in Lingala, then I come back to the other languages. Yeah. And of course, I sing it. So I've told you French, Lingala, English, Kiswahili, Kiluya. <laughs> While acknowledging the struggles in marketing his music, Ben takes pride in collaborating with the esteemed music producer, Tabu Osusa. I have been, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a professional, I, 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 I do other things uh, which are regular, you know, like you wake up in an office, uh, you know, you're dealing with the students because basically I'm a teacher, a lecturer. Okay. Yeah, basically I'm 
dealing with that and you see that routine may not allow you to do other regular things now maybe that's where i need uh, big names like uh, bonnie moving pictures and so on they may let the world know about me and maybe one day the world will know me otherwise if you ask me how i market my music i've not been marketing my music so much because i've been busy doing other things then number two uh, there are friends of mine who have picked a lot of interest in me who think now i can put my art together and uh, we make sense um like uh, um tabu susa yeah tabu susa he has been to this compound he has been to this place uh, we've been planning many many things with him he has uh, pushed me quite a bit i have produced music under his label and uh, we have done a tour around this country under his label uh, and uh, he, he, he plans to push me to some other places and uh, uh, in these coming years I'm going to be freer so that I can do more of this stuff. Maybe you can tell us a bit more because I know mm. Tabu Osusa has uh, worked with big names like uh, Kinasamba Mapangala. Mm. How is it working with him? Um, I think Tabu Osusa has an ear, I should say with pride, he has an ear of quality. Anybody who does quality and does original music, Tabu Osusa will knock at your door. Yeah. He has insisted many times that we work together. It's just that I've been busy. Especially right now, he's pushing me to working on music uh, that is original. That's why, in fact, he's the brainchild of my ideas of Adeu Deu, Ditungu, and you know, Adungus, and uh, these African percussions. So I'm doing quite a few things in that direction. His resilience is evident in his ability to sustain his livelihood through music, evident in his work with jingles, radio commercials, and soundtracks for corporates. Music pays me. Yeah. Music pays me. Like, uh, in fact, I say that the professional, the regular work that I do is my side hustle. Actually, music has done more things for me as an individual than my professional work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it pays me, you know, it pays me. I, I've done many things related to music, including commercials, jingles, you know, Mulembe FM, you know, such. Mm -hmm. Vuka FM, you know, such. So I work a lot with radio and uh, I do quite a bit with uh, corporates also, like uh, Kenya Human Rights Commission, I did their sound. I did the sound of uh, energy regulatory board, you know. Yeah. So I, I, so things to do with the music yeah. seem to give me more financial direction than my regular job. Is there any relationship yeah, between you and uh, this gospel singer and Anastasia Mkabwa? Mm. I, I should say she's married. To, she's married to my cousin. Okay. So you see the name, the name Mukabwa. I, I, I think I've answered this question many times. People think she's actually married to me that she's my wife because I'm the maid Mukabwa. No, Mukabwa is, uh, in this area Mukabwa is uh, a key name here and uh, you'll find many people called Mukabwa here. I'm not related to Anastasia. Yeah. Like, uh, of course, she's married here. Yeah. Okay. Her husband comes from this, this direction just here. As Ben looks to the future, he aims to retire from formal employment and focus solely on music. He hopes to inspire and mentor emerging talents. His dedication to passing on his knowledge and uplifting the next generation of musicians is a testament to his passion for music. Allow me to say the names of the songs, maybe not albums, yeah? Yes. Yeah, I think because the albums were just like that first one called Matumbole. Yes. Then there was uh, the initial one called Nakusifu Mama, you know, what I just did. Yeah. Later on, I've been producing individual, individual songs, yeah? Yeah. Like, uh, I, I think one that I really like. <laughs> I, 
I, I think uh, that, that that one uh, seems to have received quite an overwhelming support, especially from uh, home here. Have you ever traveled out of this country to perform, and specifically which country? And how did they receive your music, if you have ever? Yeah, if I've ever. ever. Yeah. Um, I've not gone to many countries, especially outside Africa. Within Africa, I've traveled to many places almost regularly. I'm regular in Tanzania, Uganda, uh, Rwanda. I'm, I'm regular there. I've gone to Congo, yeah, but not to perform in Congo. I was up it. I'm interested in being a child of Rumba. I really got interested in understanding Congo, the orientation of their music, so and so on. So I have gone directly to even talk to, to those people who did uh, that the, the, the historic music you hear from Congo. I've talked to them. It was just on personal interest to find out how do these guys think like because really. I should admit Congolese are very serious about music. And if, if you go there and see what they do, they are very serious. It can take the whole of Africa many ages to reach where those guys are because they live music, they dream music, they do music. Throughout our conversation, Ben emphasized the importance of society on his compositions. His music is not only a reflection of his individual artistry, but also an acknowledgement of the societal issues that surround him. So Ben, I wanted to ask you yes. uh, the songs you sing. I don't know whether it's the recording studios or whether you as an artist brings the difference because mm. you give music some kind of unique flavor. Okay. okay. So how does this flavor come in? Like the song you just sung in Darcy eh. and even the one you just sung Matomboli. Eh. Uh, because um, it gives it a different flavor that the not people know. Uh, uh, yes, uh, it is one. It's deliberate. <coughs> uh, it, it is within my musical wisdom that I want that music to sound that way. Because you see a song like that's a song that everybody is uh, has access to, isn't it? Now my, I ask myself: in that same song, what in it can be banned? You know, so I try to give it a band style in every in every song. Uh, then two, uh, let me tell you like this: how a song finally comes out, it is the musical taste of the the owner. So if you sing a song and you don't pursue it to come out in a style and a, a tone that you want, it will not come out that way. So usually when I record my music, I insist that it must sound like this. Even the guys I work with, they can tell you I really trouble them. If it's not coming out in a given style and tone and taste, I insist, no, 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 guys, let's take it again. Now, having traveled to some parts of uh, Africa and uh, definitely here in Kenya. Mm. I wanted you to give us some comparison of uh, the music you are doing, mm. the music that is being done by the youth, mm. and the music that was uh, performed by mm. the Wazes. Yeah. Yeah, how, how do you find it, comparison? What, what is your take? Let me, let, me, let me address it in these two ways. Yeah. One, uh, resources. The guys who did music long time ago, um, those of them who did not get good studios, eh, the music, the production is not good, even though the compositions were good. Yeah. Are you get me? Yes. Yeah. You see, you, you see um, in terms of resources, therefore I'm talking of equipment and so on, we did not have good equipment to record their music. If songs like Julieta, Julieta, Ukoapi Julieta, Julieta, Ukoapi Sangutulia, Tarana, Wakuli, Ofita, Ukoapi If these guys would get a good studio, like the studios Franco used to access, because Franco used to record his music in Brussels, not in Congo. Brussels, and you see, that time in Belgium, 
the quality of recording facilities as it is today in Africa. So that's why his music would come out very well. But our guys who recorded here, Kina, Kabaka and so on, their compositions were big, 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 big. Kabaka hit the whole world. George Winamo, their music was heard all over the world. But now the quality was a problem. Uh, so in terms of quality, long time ago, the content was good, quality of recording was a little low. It came to the middle ages of music, we are talking of the 90s, recording was fairly good. But the recording uh, 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 technology that has come up in the 2000 and so on years, the quality is so high. Now, that's in terms of quality. If I come in terms of content, guys who did music long time ago created a lot of content. Okay, just a minute. Yes. If that guy would find a big, nice studio, this would be a very big hit. Oh. But you see, the, 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 the hit has remained within Kenya because of the recording uh, quality. But now I'm talking of content. This content is very big. Very simple music, very big content. This content is very big. This theme is very big. Mutoto Singuo, you know. Look at that. Look at that thinking. And this guy recorded this song in 1963. So, it tells you that guys at that time had that mindset and the patience to create music that would have a lot of content. This moved on up to the middle ages of 80s and 90s. Yes, some guys did very well. Uh, the contemporary music today. Guys, now I'm talking of the youth. These guys who've been born between the 90s and up to now. Yeah, there are those of them who have insisted on holding on to the cultural music. But there are these ones who are, who are also creating their own genre. You know, the, 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 the hip, -so, hip hops of this world, kengetons of this world, the bongos of this world. You know, that's contemporary music. If you ask me, some of them, those who are patient, create good content. Others would like to rush over and create something that will last today, next week is not there. As I mentioned this, you know, when you mentioned Ali Kiba, these are guys, they create content. Diamond, they create content. When you listen, even if it's a love song, they create content that uh, can stand the test of time. One thing I can just mention is, and maybe it could be an advice, Usually what stands the test of time with respect and goes on and on until your kids are proud about it and over it is music that is decent in terms of content, in terms of the theme. So that when you sing something, it's good to remember that one day you'll have a child, a child will have to ask, Daddy, what were you singing about? <laughs> It's a nice song. Thank you. Yeah, a nice song. So I was talking about uh, the challenges that a musician, ordinary musician in Kenya, me and the other, will face in this time and era. One basic one is just the idea that in Kenya today, as it has been in the past, it's not easy to rely on music alone. That's why you find big names on paper, big names on TV, in news, but nothing to write home about. Big names, no money in the pocket. Big names, they have to beg. To live, they have to beg. That is one challenge. If it were an ideal situation, it would be that uh, when you see that big name, you'd also expect that it goes with the monetary power. 
because to say the truth our big names have been desperate that is one number two um i think we have lacked proper government structures to support art uh, that when anybody out or in government would tell you indeed nothing much has been done i'm saying this because it's easy to compare with other countries that have a space for artists where you'll find an artist will do this and they live on their music a good question would be and we should ask why is it that the biggest names in africa even kenya when they do music they have to go and live in europe why do they go to live in europe or america it's because programs are working there they're not working here two um this should be three that uh, in the past there have been there has been what we call theft you know theft my brother you call it piracy whereby um, musicians sit there they do their big thing people are ready to take it up and share without returning anything to the, the, the artist that has married that artist will continue struggling piracy has killed art it killed art in the past today maybe within the event of the digital platforms artists can survive somehow using the monetization of uh, some platforms like uh, YouTube and so on. I think that has helped quite a bit. And uh, the digital world has also exposed musicians who would never be known anywhere. The TikToks of this world, I think, have really helped these hidden artists who would never be known anywhere. Asked about whether there is any musician who inspired him, Ben had this to say. When I was young, I aspired to be like a guy called, I'm forgetting his name, but I can just say one of the things he did. Is it Antoine? Uh, 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 uh. I know this artist, I've even interacted with him, with him personally. I think the name is leaving me. But that guy inspired me when I was fairly young. The song is Misenge. I liked the, the way he sang it. It was not a difficult composition. He taught me that you can do a small thing that can resonate with the wider population very fast. Oh, me sing a song like a bar, me sing you. So he's the guy who actually took me into the world of rumba and sukus and kabacha and, and, and dombola and so on. I, I went in that day. He inspired me when I was relatively young. I hadn't made my decision, my direction in music. So he inspired me. In terms of playing guitar, I used to. Franco inspired me with this song and that kind of guitar. He's the one who did this guitar. He inspired me quite a bit. So Franco and this guy, they inspired me. The Samanguanas of this world inspired me, especially in the direction of rumba. Now, in my genre, in my new genre of music where I'm using African lyres, um, I am a child of uh, Fela Kuti. Fela Kuti, uh, African um, rock. Mm. I'm a child of Fela Kuti and I'm a child of uh, Salif Keita, especially now on the, on the African strings. Yeah, the, the work that I'm working at Loda Studio under the singing wells of Tabu Susa, I'm really in that direction. I'm doing something like that. Uh, of course, I'm not saying I'm singing their music. I'm trying to say that uh, African music, even East African music, there is Ritungu. Who will play using Ritungu if it's not me and the others? Who will ever play a Deu Deu? A very great instrument that has been ignored. People are only on guitar. So I'm trying to diversify my brother. He also shared his knowledge of the Congolese music, especially relating to the bands that took East African music industry by storm in the 1970s. There's a band that came to Kenya in the mid-70s, Super Mazembe. Super Mazembe uh, actually swept this country. During that time, the competition was about between Super, Super Mazembe and Markelepa, Markelepa, which they, in Kenya they corrupted and say Mangelepa. But it was Markelepa. Markelepa in French means Mark Time. 
Markelepa. So um, it was Mangalepa, Mazembe, of course, there's the, the Le Quinoa, um, Dungas came later. But, so this band called Super Mazembe came to Kenya and their style of music was exactly, I would say, very close to what Zaiko Langalanga was in Congo of Nyoka Longo and Bimi Ombale. So they did that in South, in South Africa. Let me say this. Earlier on, the people who dominated music in East and Central Africa were doing slow music. But there was a growing generation of young people who had energies. They, didn't, they thought Rumba was underworking them. They wanted something that will take up their energies, the energies of youth. So there was a revolution in Congo. These bands, Zaiko Langalanga, you know, Ampir Bakuba, Lipua Lipua, they came up with a revolution of fast music. Super Mazembe came to East Africa with the same. They really took up the population of East Africa. So in Kenya, Super Mazembe was top. And uh, the later years of Super Mazembe, they were later on joined by this guru um, called Kasongo Wakanema. He says Rumba music lovers requested him to compose a song in memory of Kasongo Wakanema. He was a personal friend. We used to interact many times when I was still in school at the university. We used to interact quite a bit. So when he passed on, it really touched me and it touched friends of mine. We are some friends on some wall uh, where our administrator is uh, Machoka. Machoka, you know, then uh, Ken Lusaka. We were on that wall together and they were tangled and so on, on this wall of rumbas. Actually, they came together and asked me to do a composition for Kasongwa Kanema for his homage, homage, yeah. So that's how this song came up. Yeah. It was a request that friends came up together to request and requested me to do. No wonder it was playing on Roga Roga. It has been playing on Roga Roga for quite a while. Every year during that season comes up and uh, it helps people to remember this, this great guy called Kasongo Wakanema. <laughs> Ben's rich musical journey is a testament to his unwavering commitment to his craft and his desire to inspire and uplift others through his artistry is truly commendable. I really would like to influence the youth within this country and within my area. I, will, I, I wish there would be something that I can do to make them realize that uh, there is a crop, there is a fruit somewhere that if you knew how to reach it, you can reach it and it can defend you in matters of welfare and your finances. I'd like to empower them in music. Ketebulu. Ketebulu, you know, um, they call it singing wells. Tabo Sousa studio. I, in, right now, in fact, I'm, I'm working on a project there. I'm working on a project uh, uh, in some studio in Westlands co with a, a guy from uh, England called Loda. I'm working on some project there. And the project I'm working on at Loda's studio are the ones I'm using Adeu Deu and so on. Because there's music that uh, I've done purely in a genre, in a genre or a style that is purely personal. Ben has worked on projects in collaboration with other musicians and hopes to collaborate with many more in the near future. I have done collabs with guys. I've done collabs. Timothy Kitui, you know him? Yeah. Yes. Papa Juju Siero. We have done collabs, quite a lot of collabs with Timothy Kitui. Uh, I intend to do a collab. Do you know this guy called Winyo? I intend to do collab with some guys from Senegal. Yeah. Do you know a guy? He's called. <coughs> I'm forgetting the name. But there's a friend of mine in Senegal that we are going to do. I collab with and I, I intend to reach this this guy Shak Shakembo he, 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 he was uh, performing with TPOK Jazz then Banaoke 
initially was playing with Zeiko Langalanga. He lives in Paris, so we intend to do something together. When I did a song on, um, I, I did a song on uh, Joski Kiambukuta mm -hmm. when he passed on. Yes, that was another project that I was requested by that team, Machoka, and so on. You see, Joski Kiambukuta used to perform with the OK Jazz. So this guy who is in Paris called Shak Shakembo is a vocalist. Yeah, we intend to do something together in that line. His family members and peers speak volumes about his character, discipline, and creative energy, further underscoring the profound influence of music in his life. Knowing Ben seems something deep in our blood system because his identity has been music and music alone. In all aspects of his life, me being his follower, I've been carried through the same talent because be it in the house, be it outside, we have seen music instruments hanging all over to identify that he is around. And as we grew up, we as a family, especially myself, I became his partner in music because I was pulled to be his drumist and a vocal person. So we used to sing and uh, yeah, everything we did was around music. Anytime we go to his house or we visit home and we are together, we talk music, we eat music and we enjoy music. discipline. <laughs> Ndiyo nduku yangu wa metandika mziki paka sasa sahi ni professional. Na kwa familia unakuta kuna watu wa kwa tufauti mtu wanaweza sema yeah. bena kiimba nyimbo mimi suwezi kudansi. Kuna watu kama hawa? Hakuna. Kila mtu mziki wake ukianza tu ben kila mtu hata akiwa na katika maximum. Mimi ndiyo huwa ni kama na, na uza nyimbo zake kwa upando style zangu. Na style zangu was in a putty what to wings and then they were to wings and a family. I couldn't move on by a corner chukin. I go panda quimba. Everybody loves Ben in the home. Majirani and a marafiki wings and a hook on bow and I eat a Mr. Matombole. The Wimbo Kwanza and Bari Imba. Ben has been in love with music since he, he grew up. Even when he was young, he used just to drum anything he meets and make sure somebody is listening. Personally, I'm a star who Ben loves so much because I also like music. So it's like anywhere he sees me, he has to call me and gives me a tune. We go together. As he's playing the guitar, I'm singing. So we have grown up that way. Ben Kabo has good intentions for the people around him. He respects people, he loves people, and he, he wants to make peace with those who are around him. He connects them through art and music and many other things. Yeah, you can get my music on uh, YouTube, of course, Ben Kabo. Uh, you can get my music on Spotify. Basically those two as at now. Thank you, Ben, for that inspiring story. I'm sure some of the music promoters have noted your talent. Hopefully, one day you'll come and entertain us here in the USA. We here at Moving Pictures Kenya wish you all the best in your music endeavors. My name is Bonventure and this is Moving Pictures Kenya, connecting people, inspiring Africa. <laughs>